Okay, now we're going to move to uh, Art Baker from the the Communications Manager from Idaho National Laboratory. He's going to be speaking to us about uh, the Gateway for Accelerated Innovation Nuclear Technology and the Moose Computer Simulation Framework. Art, whenever you're ready. Hello, good afternoon. Um, today I'm going to give a quick overview of GAIN, which is the Gateway for Accelerated Innovation in Nuclear. Um, and this is actually a multi-lab uh, program through DOE. I should take that initiative. It's not a program. <laughs> I get corrected on that. Um, with the lead labs being INL, Oak Ridge, and Argonne. But we're working with all the national labs are working with GAIN. I know uh, PNNL is act very active as well. Um, and it's really... Um, I'll see you here next one. It's just some quotes on some of the companies that are working with GAIN. Um, it's really the framework for how DOE is trying to move forward with accelerating innovation um, needed to bring nuclear back to the forefront as an energy option in the U.S. Um, so I'm going to go through quickly what is GAIN, a little bit on what activities um, have happened to date, and successes and some of the plans for the future with this initiative. So what is GAIN? Um, again, Gateway for Accelerated Innovation in Nuclear. Um, so they've identified some key issues with um, nuclear energy in the U.S. And, and some of those include time to market, which is way too long. Um, facilities needed for our research and development are very expensive. Um, the government has quite a few of the necessary capabilities, but access to them by private companies has been difficult in the past. Um, and then the other key area that we're working is to improve the regulatory system for approval of new technology and nuclear to make that, again, time to market much shorter. Um, how are we going to improve that? One of the ways is to provide nuclear innovators and investors with a single point of access into the DOE complex, um, provide focused research opportunities and dedicated industry engagement, and then expand upon DOE's work with the NRC to improve the, the licensing. So this is the, the gain is the DOE initiative that will help with fostering that public-private partnership that will accelerate the innovation and get new, new technology into the market sooner. So, the, you know, the real vision of GAIN is you know, to get the U.S. nuclear industry is be equipped to lead the world in development of innovative nuclear technologies by 2030. That's probably an area that we've fallen a little bit behind on, but I think this program will be key to catching back up. So what is that mission? Again, provide nuclear energy industry with access to technical, regulatory, and financial support necessary to move innovative nuclear energy technologies to commercialization. Um, and that's the principle uh, um, that it works under. Um, where is innovation needed? Um, one of the main areas is advanced reactor concepts that could be molten salt, high temperature reactors, um, licensing for those concepts, because as you'll find, our NRC is very focused on the current fleet of light water reactors. Um, high temperature gas reactors, molten salt reactors are new for them as far as approving designs and licensing. Advanced fuels and materials, um, improved safety, modular designs, developing support components, be it cables, materials for valves and other equipment that support the nuclear reactor, um, advanced methods and processes, and this is something I'll talk about a little bit in the second half, where we talk about, simu for example, simulation tools such as MOOSE that help drive quicker innovation and, quick and uh, more robust designs that can be licensed quicker, um, again, fostering better collaboration, and uh, also, and finally, you know, safety and security, both cybersecurity on the controls and uh, providing passive safety features and systems on the reactors so that they address many of the concerns people have on the safety of nuclear power going forward. So just in kind of a, a quick slide, basically there's three pillars 
that GAIN's trying to bring together, and that's the DOE with industry suppliers and utilities to assure that, you know, that DOE can lead some of the global technology commercialization, but also enable um, the industry to be able to provide utilities with the technologies that they need. So activities to date, um, the GAIN actually has a small, uh, small dedicated team. Um, Rita Barnwall is the director of GAIN. Um, she actually is affiliated with INL, but I actually believe she sits out toward the East Coast. Um, then here at INL, we have John Jackson, who's the technical lead, and Lori Brassi, who's um, administrative lead for the program. Um, so far, the GAIN has developed, and actually they're on their second execution plan. They've updated it since the first one. Um, they've started having technically focused, which I'll talk about a little bit more, workshops to identify what industry and utilities need from advanced nuclear. Um, and then the third one of they've actually done is working to try to streamline the process to work with uh, DOE and the national labs. And one of those steps was a standard CRADA for our um, GAIN nuclear energy vouchers. Outreach GAIN is very visible if you attend ANS or um, many of the conferences related to nuclear, um, both to bring awareness and to solicit input from stakeholders. So far, they've organized three tech workshops, um, conducted a couple modeling simulation workshops, um, fuel safety workshops, and thermal hydraulic workshops. Probably one of the biggest features of GAIN, that especially for the small innovators in nuclear, has been the um, GAIN vouchers. So we've had 27 companies participate in our technology working groups, but um, we've also given out uh, 22 GAIN vouchers between 2016 and 2017 for companies. Actually, to date, it's been small companies, but I think believe that's going to expand here in 2018. Um, we're, we're basically we've had eight companies in 2016 and then another 14 last year that were awarded gain vouchers that allows them to work with national labs to continue development of their technology and access the capabilities of the labs. From, from a uh, outreach, um, one of the key areas that they've worked on is our technology-specific workshops. Um, these are hosted by GAIN with NEI and EPRI support, um, and they basically it's trying to pull together um, both industry, um, nuclear suppliers, um, academia, to try to understand where our needs are for advanced nuclear energy technologies in research and development. This includes identifying technical issues that really DOE is uniquely suited to address, but sometimes uh, having that interaction with the companies allow us, allowed GAIN to more fine tune what areas of research the, the DOE and the labs in general should be functioning in. Um, and GAIN scheduled in the next, between the rest of this year and next year to continue um, work in those areas, again, um, several workshops to make sure that uh, um, we're identifying key areas of research for molten salt reactors, um, advanced reactors, um, modeling and simulation, um, and actually gap analysis on standards and code needed for licensing advanced reactors. Um, another area of work that's being started is, is helping to uncover the, I guess there's, there's a lot of information that's been de developed at national labs such as INL that are not necessarily easy for our new innovators to um, have access to. So another project under GAIN is developing a list of those documents and helping to make sure that they're made available to companies that need them or could use the information to accelerate their um, ability to advance technology. And then the last one is networking, and that's actually one that I'm wanting to be working on myself in a little more details um, through the Office of Technology Tran Transform ah, Transitions is to help develop a directory of um, 
you know, advanced nuclear developers within the labs, kind of a go-to guide for people to identify technical expertise that they could approach for advancing technology. And that's a very quick overview of GAIN. Um, one of the key aspects of GAIN and one of the key areas of research at INL um, is the next area I'll move to, and that's uh, basically the modeling and simulation tools developed at INL. Um, and I'm going to talk uh, specifically um, on the Moose application, which uh, our colleague Aaron, who we heard earlier, was actually probably one of the initial people to work on um, getting out of the lab. I'm not sure how long ago, but it was a while ago. Um, but um, Moose is the basically framework that INL has developed for um, development and basically pulling together different aspects of simulation and modeling tools for nuclear energy. Um, INL is you know, the lead energy research and development lab for the Department of Energy on nuclear energy. Um, basically since 1949 when we were actually part of Argonne, um, they've been developing nuclear energy in Idaho. Um, areas of expertise include nuclear safety analysis, material irradiation, um, management of used nuclear fuels, advanced nuclear fuels and materials, and development of advanced reactor concepts. Um, these areas of expertise have been really a driving factor in the development of the simulation tools available from INL. I'm going to try not to get too technical because I'll get over my expertise a little bit, but uh, um, the approach that INL has taken to nuclear modeling and simulation is to try to bring together all the different physics involved with nuclear um, system analysis, because fuel performance, solid mechanics, material science, reactor systems, um, and then validation and certainty quantification and bring that all into a framework that individual components can easily um, interface each other. The outcome of this is um, what we call the, the MOOSE um, framework, which is our multi-physics object-oriented simulation environment. Um, basically, its goal is to incorporate all computational science disciplines, the engineering, the software design, and mathematics under one framework. Um, and basically, this allows people to develop different modules that can be cohesively coupled for multi-physics simulation. So as you can see on the right, um, we have a considerable, and I'll show actually in a future slide, I'll show some more data on uh, people who use Moose. So Moose itself, the framework, is open source, um, and, and it can be downloaded um, from the INL GitHub site. And that was a strategy chosen to enhance um, collaboration. Um, then there will, I will also go through some of the other modules of Moose. Not all of them are open source, and that's mainly due to the fact that the content of some of those modules are under export control or 10 CFR 810 control. Um, but you can see Moose's C++ started back in 2008. Um, it is highly peer-reviewed by some of the um, entities that are shown on the right and meets the NQA1 requirements before the, the modules are released. Um, and it's like highly leveraged by both DOE, DOD, and universities, both in the U.S. and globally. What makes the Moose approach different? Um, and this is on the edge of my mathematical skills, but uh, Moose basically utilizes a kernel, which they which find as a piece of physics, and basically it's pieces of mathematics or partial differential equations that are coded in C++. Uh, what this allows people to do is there's as part of the Moose, there's a I think over a hundred 
of these, I think it's actually over closer to 200 now, um, of these separate codes that are contributed either by INL, by universities, or other people who actually use the software. And they're, the, app, the framework of Moose allows these to be easily coupled, so it allows somebody to take the Moose, take what's already out there available, and to rearrange those kernels and quickly develop a new application. So the, the Moose approach different, like it says, co code coupling for both Moose applications and external codes, um, which this allows both applications to run simultaneously in parallel. So you can do a heat transfer, a neutronics, thermal hydraulics, all in parallel on the same system. And basically that allows, by the way it's developed, once you have the code set up, you can create, compile as one executable that can be run very efficiently. Um, and we've also had luck with the, the openness of the Moose's um, other codes like OpenMC, Serpent, MCMP, Neutron Transport, Monte Carlo codes, for example, that other labs have developed, other universities have been able to be integrated with the Moose application and allow them to be coupled as, through um, part of the simulation. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about who's using Moose and a little bit about our philosophy on commercialization. So the goal of Moose really is, is the commercialization goal of Moose is actually use and collaboration. So the Moose application itself is available uh, open source on the INL GitHub site. Um, and we uh, attempt to um, get that out to as many people as we can. Um, and I'll show you some of the, the users. It's actually kind of surprising who uses the code. Um, and then we have other modules, which we call the herd of applications, some of which are open source, some of which we license for free. And that all depends on uh, whether the code is export controlled or 10 CFR 810 controlled. If the code is open for um, or there's no export controller, 10 CFR 810 controls on the code, we will open source it and put it on the GitHub site. And if not, then we, then we request, you have to request a free license from INL. So interestingly enough, uh, this is having the Moose, out, uh, Moose uh, software out on GitHub, we're able to track um, some of, of where people are um, using the Moose application. You'll see the U.S., of course, is the largest user, but it's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, you know, Russia and China actually have a lot of activity with our Moose um, framework software. Um, and actually, Australia has, has not only downloaded it and used it a lot, but have actually provided quite a few contributions back to the, the framework. Um, If you look at, uh, you can see most of the national labs that work um, in our um, DOD uh, Bettis lab um, access and use the Moose Herd, Moose application. Um, as well as most of the major universities that have nuclear engineering programs. So as Moose is the overarching um, application, then as part of that, um, some specific computational tools that, like I said, we call the Moose Herd um, are available for use in the program. So I'll quickly go through some of these. Um, for example, component agent, aging and damage evolution and structural mechanics. We have a herd animal called Grizzly. Um, this one is actually a export controlled code due to some of the um, material aging due to neutronics information that's included with Grizzly. Um, but we will actually be um, adding a new module called Black Bear to the herd that will be open source but will not include the uh, information that requires export um, control. Um, we have a suite of 
multi-scale fuel performance codes that include Bison and Marmot. Again, these are export control codes, but if you're a university or researcher, or especially if you're a U.S. company and you want access to those, um, you can contact INL and we will provide you with a free license once we've gone through the appropriate export control and um, security checks. Um, again, for irradiated fuels and materials, we have Rattlesnake and Mammoth. Again, these are both licensed software codes, but licensed for free. You just need to apply if you're a U.S. company or a university and provide us with the information you want to use it, why you want to use it, and we'll provide a free license. Um, Relapse 7 is a relatively new code that we're working on um, that will provide uh, basically a reactor system analysis. Um, and again, one of the advantages is it will be coupled with the rest of the moose herd versus Relap 5, which isn't currently a standalone software. Um, this next last page is um, here is, is our, uh, these are again some of our open source, so Redtail, um, I'm not sure Redtail's hit the GitHub site yet, but it will be shortly, um, is basically a dynamic probability risk assessment um, that's coupled to the multi-physics. Um, and, it, and risk informed safety margin characterization, um, which is one of the new areas of research in uh, safety analysis. Um, and that module will be available on our GitHub shortly. Seismic and, um, area, we have Mastodon, which um, actually is getting a lot of attention. Um, it couples closely with Grizzly, um, but also provides a lot of uh, analysis capability in uh, nonlinear soil structure interaction. Um, and then, of course, Badger, again, is another open source um, for geological en engineering um, and basically flow. There are several other small animals available. For example, PICA, that's open source. Um, and again, available on the INL GitHub site. <laughs> 